Hey, everybody, welcome back to the comment section. Coming at you week 15, the NFL is kicking off right now. We're getting going here on a Thursday night. Chiefs are hosting the San Diego Chargers. It's 14 to 7, just before halftime. Poker guy, how you doing out there on the East Coast? I'm good, man. I'm just going to pull this game up real quick. So while we're doing this pod, we can kind of go back and forth to it because I think this game over here is going to be a good one. Right, it's going to be a good one. Let's go ahead. Let's get into this. It's going to be a good pod for everybody. So let's get rocking and rolling. First off, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? And then we'll get into picking all these week 15 games against the spread. So first thing, this has been what's going around. Steph Curry, he doesn't believe that we landed on the moon, apparently. But now he does believe that we landed on the moon after an intense public backlash. So he went on the, I don't know whose podcast that is. Some NBA players have a podcast on the Ringer Network. Doesn't matter who they are. He went on there and they got into some conspiracy theories. And one of the that they threw out there was that we have not actually landed on the moon. Well, when we were talking about it earlier, you sounded like you think that we landed on the moon. So I want to ask you, did we land on the moon, Bobby? You know what? I'm a I'm a moon truther. So I, I believe <laughs> in I believe two things. I believe the earth is spherical, that it's globular, globular. I don't know what that word is. But and I also believe that we that we did land on the moon. Because if there's one thing that I do know, it's that 400,000 people working together for 10 years to fake a moon landing and then keep absolute secrecy for the next 40 years, that's more likely than landing on the moon. Oh, see, that's, you know, I don't disagree. I think they took off. I think they took off from Earth. I think they were in space. I think they were floating around in space. But I think... I don't know what to believe, man. I'm like an agnostic when it comes to the moon landing. I'm not going to disagree or agree with you, but I don't know, man. Maybe they didn't land on the moon. Who knows? You, you're, you're, you fucking know that they did. Quit trying to drum up controversy by pretending that they didn't. Look, it's funny how people... I know about, all I know about space is what I learned from Armageddon. Okay, There's an <laughs> asteroid that landed on the asteroid. They blow it up. There's a guy with a hat. Um, there's some fucking animal crackers on this chick's belly. That's all I fucking know. What if That's Bruce it. Willis walked into a room and very definitively told you that, yes, we, we did land on the moon? Would that be enough authority for you to, be, to believe all I, that conclusively? That's all I need to hear, brother. But he hasn't come up to me. All right? He hasn't sat down and explained the moon landing to me. So as far as I'm concerned, we never landed on the moon. I'm with Steph Curry on this one. Or actually, I'm on Steph Curry 1.0. I don't like <laughs> Steph Curry 2.0. I think he changed his mind. He did walk it back, um, but he he seemed about as sincere as Kareem Hunt did during his Lisa Salter's apology. There's some Michael Jackson moonwalk shit going on there. I don't believe that. What's funny about people that do that, and particularly the flat earthers, is they're beyond their fucking cell phones like that use satellites that are in space that rotate around the spherical earth. <laughs> I'll be like, no, nah, man, I'm going to let me pull up this YouTube video about flat earth on my cell phone and be like, yeah, bro. But like, I can't see China right now. I mean, or like, I, you know, I just, I don't know how that works, but like, there's no way that, that this thing is round. What's funny is like, it, they're willing to admit round. that the moon is round <laughs> and that the sun is round that every other fucking planet, that every other celestial body in the known universe is spherical, but they're like, I'll except tell you what, man. to the Earth, yeah. I'll tell Earth. you what, we live on a fucking a platter. <laughs> we live on a, a nice little plate of cheese, it's crackers, weird. and humans. It's weird. They describe it as a snow globe, and it – like, it doesn't make sense. Like, there's a couple things that they agree on that, like, it's not spherical in a sense, but – I don't know, man. I've been on these YouTube things where you click, 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 and you see what they believe. And it's called, it's all kind of over the place. But one thing that we can all agree on is the Earth people, it's fucking round, okay? You get in a plane and you fly in one direction. You give it a couple hours, maybe 12, 24 hours. You're back in the same place, okay? Um, that's a fucking circle. <laughs> you just did a circle, all right? How do um, I know that, though? How do, how, how do you know that it's a, a circle around... And not like a horizontal circle. You know what I mean? That you're, you know, like I could get in my living room and walk in a circle too. It doesn't mean that my floor, that's probably their comeback to that is it doesn't mean that my floor is round, right? So I can end up back, I can go in a circle and end up back in the same spot. Um, yeah, you can't argue with Amazing. those people. Amazing. You can't, you can't bring logic and reason into that shit. It's all about passion. And while we're talking about passion, 
Oh, my blood is boiling. My passion is rising because we got a big dick Nick sighting in Philly coming this week. Carson Wentz, he's out. He's got a fractured vertebra. And it's time for the Super Bowl MVP, Nick Foles, to get back in the fold and bring joy to millions across the earth as he goes in to St. Or excuse me, St. Louis. Did I say St. Louis? I meant Los Angeles. My bad, Rams fans. Uh, as he goes into L.A. this weekend on Sunday night, we thought it was a big matchup before. It's an even bigger matchup right now. Um, so what do you think is going to happen? Give me a prediction here. We're thinking overtime win. Um, we're thinking Nick Foles loss. Give me a real realistic prediction here. All I know is the Rams are 11 and a half point favorites and they are not going to win that game by 11 and a half points. And I, I want to believe, man, like I said, I'm not an Eagles fan, but <laughs> oh man, there's nothing I'd like better than seeing BDN win these last three games to get the Eagles on a bit of a run and create like an actual genuine quarterback controversy in the Philadelphia area. Um, if this is going to be on record, but if Nick Foles takes the, takes the driver's seat, okay. If he takes the driver's seat from this point on and he brings him into the playoffs and he wins a Super Bowl, um, should I get a tattoo on my butt now or should I get a tattoo of my butt later? Let's, let's make a little wager here. If, uh, if well, Nick- wagers with you are no good, sir. They're no good, sir. And I'll tell you how I know that. Because of the year two thousand because of the year two thousand and fourteen. That's how I know that. Or two thousand thirteen. So this is back when Tim Tebow, you are a Florida grad. I am a University of Arizona grad. The only two good things to ever happen to the University of Arizona football program are Rob Gronkowski and Nick Foles. I'll tell you what's not good, fucking our kicker Josh. Fuck He's, you, AZ football AZ dad. Football that, dad. That dude's fucking choke artist. He ain't no good. But anyhow. I ain't ever gonna give you. I'm never gonna let you live that down. You're gonna be You're selling gonna, insurance at State Farm, and I'm gonna be calling up, like setting up fake policies with you, and then bailing out the last minute just to waste your time, Josh. Like you wasted mine, like you broke my heart. But anyhow, there's only two good things that ever happened to the University of Arizona football program, and the best thing that ever fucking happened was Nick Foles winning that Super Bowl last year. Before that, okay. he threw 27 touchdowns to two interceptions. And you and I had a bet that if Nick Foles made the Pro Bowl and Tim Tebow, I don't know what the bet was with Tim Tebow, but he did not keep his end of it up. He if just that happened, to, uh, start. He just needed, you know, my bet was over. I lost immediately because he just needed to be on an NFL roster. And he was on, I think, the Patriots roster for like 20 minutes and they cut him. So, yeah. like, once September rolled around, I just kind of closed my eyes and put my earmuffs on. And I lost the bet. I kind of did some mental gymnastics and made sure that I, I didn't. I, as, our, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a flat you, earther here. I never made a you fucking welched, bet. Right? Sir, you welched <laughs> on a bet is what you did. Bet. You, you we, had, we had very bet. specific terms. And you had to purchase a Nick Foles jersey and hang it above your couch. And sir, sir, you did not do that. You did not do that at all. So I'm not making any fucking bets with you because what's the point? I'm betting against air here because you're not going to fucking follow through, dude. You're a welcher, man. You're a Michael Jordan, dude. Michael Jordan doesn't pay his bets off. His dad gets killed. You don't pay your bets off and you get away scot-free. All right, so you're better than the goat on that one. You're getting away yeah, without paying your bets. I, karma's a bitch, though, because I think my tore my ACL that same year. So my ACL tear pretty much is your fault, buddy. So... I'm gonna blame that shit on you, dude. I've been limping ever since. You've been you know, limping that ever right since. Mine doesn't doesn't feel right, man. That's your fault. So we're on opposite sides of the fence there. One place where it seems to be unanimous. Um, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Robert Sarver, who is the owner of the Phoenix Suns, he's come out. He's trying to extort the great people of the city of Phoenix of the state of Arizona into paying somewhere about between a hundred and two hundred million dollars to upgrade his stadium of the basketball team that's worth $1.5 billion. And he is threatening to leave the area if he doesn't get his way. It's crazy that um, organizations can hold like cities hostage for money, for taxpayer money. That's bullshit. Especially in an age where nobody goes to games in the first place. Why are you going to, you know, it's not like the statistics are there to back up a place investing in a stadium doesn't make any sense. 
So the reality is he's probably just going to move to Las Vegas or who knows where, maybe Seattle. But the writing's on the wall. I don't think they're going to be in Phoenix. But um, that's not the cool part of the story. The cool part is that he just got ripped on by an old lady about six or seven, eight hours ago. Um, yeah. Have you so seen that old video? Lady Did you get a showed... chance to see that? Yeah, so an old lady showed up to the city council meeting and she not only trashed Robert Sarver, she trashed everybody on the city council for entertaining the idea that they would spend taxpayer money to keep that piece of shit in town. Her quote, I believe, was he's so tight that it squeaks when that it squeaks when he walks. All right. So he's a tight That's ass. Awesome. He's never spent any money to make the team better. And you don't have a lot of leverage in, you know, in your favor when your fucking basketball team is the worst team in the NBA and you've got like four wins, you've had two consecutive games, there was at least two games in the last couple of weeks where you've only scored nine points in the first quarter. It's like, oh, yeah. this is the product that you're putting out there that you want the great taxpayers to pony up for. And I'll tell you what, the best thing that could ever happen to people in the Phoenix area is that he follows through with his threat because they'll get another basketball team there eventually. That's not the problem. He's been a piece of shit owner for the past two fucking decades. I say good riddance. You take this fucking team, you t drag them up to Seattle, drag them into to Las Vegas, wherever the fuck you want to take them. Better off good riddance. We'll keep the spirits high by, you know, watching Diamondbacks games and watching Josh Rosen throw interceptions, whatever it takes. And we'll get by. <laughs> I know we lost a hockey team down there as well. I mean, it's not like, hey, it's not like winter is the only good time to be in Arizona. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Um, but, you know, lost both winter sports, but who cares? They'll get a basketball team back there. He's a dirtbag and good riddance if he does decide to leave. Yeah, this lady, uh, she's the shit, though. I mean, she smelled like mothballs, piss, and denture adhesive. But goddamn, she was <laughs> spitting some hot fire. I, I don't care what she's saying. I support her. I want a T-shirt of her. I want a bumper sticker. And I really hope that finally there's some finality to people just using taxpayer money and just setting it on fire that maybe internet memes and YouTube videos will be our saving grace and be our saviors in this age of where taxes are literally burnt and set ablaze. Hopefully this is going to be the age. This is going to be the change. And hopefully this old lady will be that little ignition will be that little flicker of light flicker of hope. Yeah, be be the change you wish to see in the world, man. Get nasty pretty with much, it. Pretty much, you're Batman. You're like Batman, pretty much in that movie. She's a Third hero one. that we all deserve. Another owner yeah. that's on that's <laughs> on the hot seat is uh, Mark Davis. So the Oakland Raiders are being sued uh, by the city of Oakland. They're claiming collusion and a bunch of other things. I don't really. They don't really have a case, but. I think their biggest complaint is they are trying to get all the money that they paid for Mark Davis's haircuts back in the coffers so they can open up a few hospitals and keep the residents of Oakland healthy and happy as the Raiders leave town. Yeah, they're gone. They're fucking gone. They're confirmed to Vegas. They're out. I would love to see a little bit of compensation for these people, man, because that's bullshit, dude. Again, taxpayer money being just burnt. I hope this old lady drives her old ass up to Oakland and they fucking depose her. <laughs> I hope they depose her and then she becomes the voice and the hero that we all deserve. She just becomes like the Michael Moore of, uh, of, of like sports teams that want to leave the area. She just fucking dude, shows up 90. with a bullhorn and a bunch of angry yeah, old dude. people. A hundred percent, man. She's 90 years old, dude. Like, are you really, what's worse than getting berated and getting told off by an old lady? There's nothing worse nothing and not only that dude she's pretty coherent she's pretty pretty eloquent more eloquent than you and me put together so she could be our saving grace so she's gonna get all fired up she's gonna head to golden corral get a few chicken fingers in her <laughs> you know get all hot and bothered at four in the afternoon rip on fucking sovereign at the meeting and fall asleep on the way home probably behind the wheel um narrowly <laughs> narrowly running, keeping her car on a couple the people like she's been speaking blasting of driving idea. cars, speaking of driving cars into houses and into other people, <laughs> that, video of that guy who quote unquote stole his, uh, you know, somebody stole his car and the, uh, the perpetrators seem to have driven that car through a house and they were yeah. able to interview the owner of the car. Did you see that video by any chance? Yeah. So I, I watched that. I mean, I just got refreshed on that. That came out, uh, I think back in may that first hit the airwaves 
But the, the biggest thing there, I'm wondering about a follow-up on that, because that dude, his car didn't get stolen. Everybody that saw that video, it's like, dude, his car did not get stolen. He is he is as surprised as it got stolen, as Cream Hunt is sorry. He's not surprised at all. And he he's like, he has no idea. The thing with the little video clip where it's like, ooh, that's a bit of damning evidence. Uh, maybe get Netflix to do a little making a, making a thief or something like that on this guy. And he nice. says that he has no idea how the thieves got his car keys. <laughs> the, the car crash is like a block or two down the road from his house. And he's just like standing around. There's like, you know, he's like, <laughs> there's like an old lady who almost got murdered. And he's standing out there all surprised. <laughs> like, man, I tell you what, man, someone could have been in there. Someone could have gotten killed. This is this is very surprising. And this is a, this is a travesty, my friend. <laughs> this is a big travesty. <laughs> they need to find this guy. And they need to fucking get, you didn't put him in prison, dude. We can't even be having people walking around this area wearing backwards baseball hats and black shirts and sagging their pants, know. stealing cars. There's probably someone, I don't know if you saw my jeans, sir. My jeans are very tight against my hips. So there's no possible way I could have driven or driven this uh, car into the house. There's probably one of those gentlemen with the uh, very saggy pants. So uh, it's so funny. I showed my girl that video and like 30 seconds in, she started cracking up and she's like, he fuck, he fucking did that. <laughs> he fucking did that. It's very so clear. She knew. She knew she's not stupid. She picked up on that real quick. Um, it's it's awesome. it's very obvious. All right. It's and, awesome. It's and one awesome. last uh, one last sports owner making the news here. Sports owner slash sports legend Michael Jordan recently seen slapping the shit out of Malik Monk at the end of a game. So the Charlotte Hornets hit a three pointer towards the very end of the game. Malik Monk ran onto the court before time was over. Kind of celebrating doing a little airplane dance and he got called for a technical foul with i think three tenths of a second left and he walked over there and someone on twitter said it best they're like mj running this team like an aau dad <laughs> so he came over there <laughs> and he was just slapping him in the back of the head uh repeatedly like he hit him once and then he felt like he didn't hit him hard enough so then he came back and he slapped him in the back of the head again um, as a snowflake myself, I was offended. <clears throat> I was very offended that Michael Jordan brutally assaulted um, Mr. Monk. And I hope that um, they file a, what is it, a CBA union grievance, because I'm very offended. Um, as an adult male, I thought it was awesome. And I loved it. And I hope he hits him again. The cool thing is that I feel like there, you know, no harm, no foul. Malik Monk was smiling. Michael Jordan was kind of smiling a little bit. I don't think there was any animosity to it. You know, just a little bit of old-fashioned AP, you know, AP child rearing. That's all. I didn't see what the big deal was. <laughs> yeah, AP retweeted that, and he's like, go get him, Mike. I don't believe in timeouts or CTE. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and go and whoop that kid. Go go pick out. I remember I read uh, Bo Jackson's book, Bo Knows Bo, when I was growing up. And one of the ways that uh, Bose Jackson – so have you ever heard of a switch? That was kind of one of the things that the AP – in the AP case. Do you know what a switch is? is? Isn't it kind of like a really skinny stick? Like yeah, stick? <laughs> exactly. So it's like the end of a tree branch. And Bo yeah. Jackson's mama used to whoop his ass with a switch. And in the book, it, one of the things that was kind of unique and cruel where she would make them go out and pick their own switch. Right. And she'd be like, pick a good one. Cause if you don't get a good one, I'm going to go out and find one. Right. That's <laughs> so crazy, like, dude. That's so crazy. it's like, dude, you had to pick out your own torture implement as a young child. So I don't know if that a, is one of the reasons cool. he achieved greatness, but I don't want to take it off the table as the, I guarantee you, uh, AZ football dad never fucking broke out the switch for Josh. I've never been in one of those pressure situations before, and it showed. Probably, yeah, he probably hugged him and showed him affection, which, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is not the way to go. That's um, not I the had way a to classmate parent your mine. kids. I had a classmate of mine that's funny. She was Haitian, and uh, she grew up in Haiti, and uh, she was really cool. It was kind of like down-to-earth chick, you know, been through hell and back kind of girl. And she had that same story that her and her brother, you know, growing up, they would kind of get into tussles and pick on each other and do all the shit. And the grandma would do the same thing. Grandma would tell them both, hey, go outside, get a stick. And if it's the wrong size stick, 
I'm going to go out. I'm going to get one. I'm, I'm still whooping your ass. <laughs> I'm so, going to be pissed that I got to get up off my ass to go pick one out myself. Exactly. And this and whooping is going to be a double time, whooping. She said the very first time, um, both of them picked up a really skinny stick and she went out and she got a, a fucking huge stick, like pretty much a, <laughs> like a third of a palm tree and just yeah. whooped the fuck out of them. And then ever since that moment on, um, they, you know, they still misbehaved. So I guess <laughs> yeah. they didn't really learn. So, you know. Uh, they got way. better stick selection though yeah they got better yeah. at that. that i guess that's the lesson that they learned they didn't learn to behave well but they did learn to, to pick out let me ask sticks. you man let me, this is a good moment to ask you did, when you were growing up did you get your ass smacked around a little bit because i definitely got smacked yeah i got I my ass, i got my ass whipped around for sure okay, but cool. my you okay, know cool. my dad is a, a self-absorbed narcissist so he uh <laughs> he got no problems whooping somebody's ass that's neither here nor there i tell you somebody's got no problems whooping somebody's ass is a 13 year old andy reed all right so andy reed this has been floating <laughs> around i think this was on monday night football a week or two ago yeah but i just yeah. saw it we forgot to talk about it at the time andy reed he got uh, today this is why i saw it today is the 47th anniversary to the day of his appearance at I think it was LA LA Chargers Stadium, and they had a pump pass and kick competition with the 13 year old Andy Reid, and he's basically we're talking about Hannah Mouncey last night, the Clay Matthews sized linebacker that plays handball for the Australian national team, the transgendered um, individual that does that. And Andy nice. Reid was like the fucking Hannah Mouncey of that competition. He's about a foot taller than everybody else, just launching that thing, Patty Mahomes style down the field. It was not fair. Um, for anybody watching, it pretty much looks like Andy Reid now. Like it literally <laughs> yeah. looks like the same person. Um, just a little bit, a little bit chubbier, if anything. I mean, it was kind of a big dude. Just look it up, guys. It's the it's the age of you know 4G LTE stuff. It literally looks like an adult male surrounded by children and he's just fucking launching it's like you launching expect, this yeah, you expect chris hansen to be one of the referees and then to like fucking tell andy reed to take a seat at some point <laughs> no no I'm, I'm only 13 man i'm not out here uh, profiling these kids it's I'm, I'm literally i'm 13 dude yeah yeah that mustache <laughs> says otherwise sir <laughs> he's had that same mustache for like 47 years so good on you andy um keep it up love that mustache and last couple things to talk about here. I've seen this. Have you heard about this? So our man, Bobani Jones, I'm a big fan of his, like the show, love him on Twitter. He was on his, his uh, afternoon show, High Noon, and he had some interesting things to say about Josh Allen. So Josh Allen, the quarterback for the Buffalo Bills, we'll talk about him a little bit later. He is a white dude, and he fucking can't throw a football, but he runs really fast. So... Can't complete a pass down the field. I think they were saying that he, he takes the most attempts deep down the field and he hits less of them than anybody else. So Bamani Jones came out and said, yo, Josh Allen needs to harness his inner Jaheim Allen, right? which I guess, you know, Jaheim primarily a not a white dude's name. Uh, that's the implication there. And he said, you know, defenses wouldn't let this dude run wild. Like they'd have a better plan. Like if, if his name was Jaheim Allen. I don't see what the problem is. I thought that was fucking hilarious. I thought that was some good stuff. I thought it was good What's too. A lot of pissed off white triggered. people in northern New York <laughs> that would disagree. Uh, but, my, but Bonnie Jones, he ain't going to take that shit on Twitter. So he's throwing bombs back at him. And keep it up, Amani. Love it. Oh, I'm going to follow him right now on Twitter. I'm going to pull it up while we're while we're moving on forward here. I want to I want to have a good laugh. Go ahead and follow that everybody. Monty Jones, great great follow on Twitter. He's got a great program. Free He's got a plug podcast for you, too. Uh, the podcast you, may Bumani. or may not be as good as this podcast. I'll let you decide. Uh last guy to talk about from a reporter front, Stephen A Smith had a rough morning. He was on it was what is he on? Pardon my no, part of my takes at the uh, sports podcast. First take. So he's on first take. And he was having a segment with Max Kellerman and Teddy Bruschi. And he started talking about Hunter Henry and how he'd been thinking about Hunter Henry and how well he's played all year. And as he does this, you got to look this up, people. It's another great video. Teddy Bruschi looks like he's very confused, like he's <laughs> leaking diarrhea into his pants or something. He's like, what is going on here in the world? Because Hunter Henry hasn't played a single snap all year. He has been on IR for the entire year, 
And Stephen A. Smith came out and he did half of a walk back where he said, all right, man, uh, I got confused with whoever the fucking other Chargers tight end is. And Hunter Henry's white as snow. And the other dude that he was talking about is not. He, he's, I don't know if his name's Jaheem or whatever it is, but he's not a white dude. He's a black dude. And he's like, oh, I got those two guys confused. And absolutely, <laughs> everyone believed him. The same amount of people believe Stephen A. Smith as the amount of people watching that dude with the quote-unquote stolen car video believe that that kid like, actually got his car stolen. The dead giveaway here is uh, the eyebrows. The other two guys, their eyebrows, they look like caterpillars. They look like caterpillars that just saw a bird and the caterpillars <laughs> are running away because those things are fucking moving and they're confused and they're, they're not stationary anymore. So that's the dead giveaway that the, both of them were like, what the fuck? But they're professionals, okay? They're professionals. As a side note, dude, Stephen A, brother, you need to do something about that hairline, bro. Come on. He know. needs That's... to be on Scott Van Pelt's Come On Home, man. Like, come, come on home, on dude. Home, Just go Jordan with that it. Shave it off, right man. Now. Shave it off. Stephen A's funny, man. I like Stephen A. He's just this crazy dude. I like Stephen A, but that hairline, man, that don't look right. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> like, uh, that, that, that ain't right, man. That, that just Speaking ain't of- right. Speaking of moving eyebrows, dude, that thing is moving. It's just, it's going in the wrong direction, man. It's going north, you know, just. You got to wonder if his shit, dick dude. works at this point, because I'm sure he's snorting Propecia trying to keep that shit like as far up there as he can. Like, Jesus. At what point, like, do you just stop, like, lining it up like that, too? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'll tell you this, though. I, I saw know. Grant Hill and Steve Smith on the NBA whatever that NBA recap show is on the NBA channel. Okay. And those are two dudes with great sets of hair. I was going to Grant Hill's hair. And I mean, he's probably 40 at this point. I was like, fuck dude. Guy looks like he's 20 years old. He's got a shit's fucking lined up tight. And then I was like, at Steve Smith. I was like, damn, his hair looks great too. I'm jealous of those guys <laughs> for yet dude, another the reason. Uh, They're NBA Jaylen superstars Rose. and their hair is spectacular. Dude, the best guy is Jalen Rose. You look at Jalen Rose when he's back playing in uh in Michigan and Indiana and stuff, and he he looks exactly the same. The same fucking hairline, same fucking face, not a wrinkle. They say black don't crack. He he looks identical. I believe it. Jalen <laughs> Jalen Rose it, is one of those guys who jumped on the Steph Curry bandwagon of you know. Tell you what, man, I'm not sure that we landed on the moon either. <laughs> this little side note on Jalen right there. He's a true Jalen. I'm with you, brother. I'm fucking with you. I'm on that same wagon. Don't listen to Bobby. Bobby's a. Bobby's a, of, he's a fake, he's a falser, whatever it is. You're a bunch, of, of, you're bunch of R words, bunch of redskins. Um, that, no, that's the wrong R word. <laughs> that's, a wrong, that's a different R word that you can't say anymore these days. Do you know in England, you can actually get, like, England is kind of turned into Pakistan, where, like, I guess it's because they've had so much <laughs> illegal immigration there, where, like, you, you can actually get in trouble for saying stupid shit either on the internet or in the real world. Like, really? I get it. Like, in America, like, you can get in trouble. Like, there's that dude, that fucking dude in Tallahassee or wherever he's from, that racist guy who put up the Willie Taggart thing. And, yeah, I mean, you can get in trouble. Like, that guy lost his job. But, you know, the Gestapo, like, what was that, Gestapo? Is that the, the Nazi police? KGB? KGB, Gestapo? Yeah, whoever, man. The SS. I, I, I hope I'm not saying like gelato, which I believe is the Italian ice cream. <laughs> like, I no, don't get those two things completely. The SS, dude. It's yeah, the so SS, like right? they're not coming to, to that guy's house. Like actually no one's coming to that guy's house anymore because they don't want to be seen with his racist ass. So there are consequences to the thing that you say, but they should not be government regulated. So, hey, England, 1776, That's that was the last time we ever gave a fuck about what anybody over there had to say. Um, except for the listeners, we like our yeah, listeners. Except for you guys, England. man. You guys, except for you guys, you, just kidding, you guys are dope. I'm just kidding. Uh, except for you guys, uh, we love football. Uh, go, man, you. Unless you're Liverpool fans, uh, and you know, we we love everything that you guys have to do, except for being under your tyrannical rule. We are not a fan of that. And you, and you guys can also keep Jacksonville Jaguars. We don't want them. We've yeah. had them for a couple of years. You can fucking yeah, keep. Yeah. Next them. time they show up there, man, just keep, just keep them, dude. Just keep them. Just keep them. They may not want them either, though, because when they were over there last time, they tried to skip out on that bill. <laughs> Remember that? They tried to not fucking yeah. pay. But that was a misunderstanding. Handled that was internally. That was handled internally. Yeah. Handled internally. <laughs> They're gonna handle that shit internally. So last thing well, you, you never talked finished. about. You never finished. So what happened? Like you can say shit 
online? Like, give me an example. You oh, said I somebody mean, got- like you can like they, I saw some stuff on Twitter um, where like the police are literally saying like even if it's not a crime, like they're gonna come knock on your door. It's it's called hate speech, right? Which like who the fuck gets to determine what is hate speech? Is my rant against the Arizona kicker is that hate speech? I mean, because I fucking don't like that guy. <laughs> I don't like him at all. <laughs> but since we're, I think I'm okay though. We're both cis- cisgendered white males, so I should be good to go. I guess if he was anything but that, like if he was a, if that was a chick that used to be a dude, I think I'd be in jail already if I did that that same sort of yeah. rant uh, in England. Yeah. Like if that was Hannah well, Mousy, like I mean, you might be there already, dude, with all your transphobia. For all we know, he'd probably be fucking locked up a long time ago. I'd be doing calling uh, cowherd <laughs> style on this pod for sure. Dude, I'll tell you what, man, I've been getting robo calls all the recently. I've been getting robo calls, so I'm sure somebody been listening to the pod, and now they got the NSA spying on me, sending me robo calls, trying to make sure I'm not hurting trans people in my house. I don't know, man. <laughs> so, uh, last thing to talk about when we we'll get into these games, everybody. Property Brothers. So I read an article on The Ringer today about the Property Brothers. So anyone not familiar with the Property Brothers, they are a HGTV phenomenon. So there are a couple 6'4", pasty white dudes that are <laughs> um, they're basically identical. I think they're identical twins. They look pretty much exactly the same. So they're, they're, they're identical they're- twins. They all look like Ben Affleck. You pretty much got two people that look like Ben Affleck, and they're like quirky and fun. Yeah, they look like Ben Affleck, like uh, if like, they worked at Gap. Ben Affleck, if they worked at the Gap. Yeah, if they worked at the Gap, or what's that other jeans place? Um, I went to this jeans uh, place a while ago. Express, the Buckle. The Buckle is what it's called. <laughs> that um, kid's stupid. And I had this skinny little fucking, I'm 36 years old. So I had this skinny little high school kid. Yeah, I'm 6'3". I'm like 220. Like, I'm not like a gigantic lard ass, but like, you know, whatever. I, my, my, <laughs> ideal, my ideal weight is probably like like 200 or 195. I'm, you know, he's not husky, just a little gelatinous, you know, just yeah. marginally gelatinous. I mean, I'm, 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 I'd be uncomfortable taking my shirt off and having anyone take a picture of me. That's where I'm at at this point. Most people in their mid thirties, <laughs> you kind of get there. Uh, but I go in that store and this dude, I mean, I'm just want, I just want a pair of jeans, man. And first off, I didn't realize like how expensive those jeans were, but anyhow, I was I was in it too deep until until I realized that. I went in there for jeans, I wanted jeans. And this guy like he he just roasts me. He's like, "I right, there's this type of jeans." He's like, "But that's usually for like, you know, guys like me." <laughs> what do you mean guys like you? He's like, "You know, like, like fitter guys." I'm like, "Oh, fuck you, bro." I was like, "This is like this is, this, fuck you <laughs> like fuck you dude give me my size 36 loose cuts and let me go on my way man like you fucking asshole let me shamefully take these to the register it's not like i gotta shop oh, it. no, it's like i gotta order my it's like i gotta order two pairs of jeans and then have some seamstress slice them together so i can fit into them like don't make me feel like that man don't make me feel like that one day you're gonna be old bald and fucking husky like me bro but anyhow these guys are like they're like guys that could work at the gap and so one of the things that they do is they start the, what the article was about. So the article is by Claire McNair at the ringer P- free plug for you guys. Uh, they're HGTV stars and they are really like pumping up the marketing. So, you know, however, everyone's trying to sell t-shirts, everything and all this sort of stuff. Well, they're trying to sell you like Ottomans and, you know, like lampshades and shit that you can decorate your house with. They've got four, shows they do on hgtv they're superstars man they're gonna you know their main show which i've seen it plays in the lobby at my work uh so i'm like walk by it every day is they find a a bunch of they're basically the tip of the spear when it comes to gentrification and driving poor people out of neighborhoods so they find a bunch of young couples and they get them a house and then they renovate their house at a ridiculously low cost because it's really the show that is subsidizing that and then the free materials and all this other shit. And then they put these rich young yuppies into these new houses and start to raise property taxes and destroy the neighborhoods. So that's, they're really not, they're community destroy, they're house builders, but community destroyers. So that's the, the hidden darkness there. What they're doing 
is they have a fucking cruise. All right. I don't know if you saw Did you see the Gronk cruise that happened, I think, last year? What do you mean a cruise? So literally, it's a cruise ship, right? So what people would do, like people are weird about celebrities. I don't get it. But what they do is they're like, hey, you can go on a cruise and be on the same boat as like Rob Gronkowski and party for like four days for a certain amount of money. And what I read about that was it was funny because they couldn't sell all the tickets for that Rob Gronkowski cruise. So they had to open up the rest of them to like regular people. So like Ethel and George, who thought they were going on a nice little shuffleboard <laughs> cruise down, down to like Nassau, like off the Florida coast, they end up with like a bunch, like a 50 to 60% Rob Gronkowski MTV spring break cruise. So <laughs> that's not, that's not where you want to be uh, in your golden years. But anyhow, these guys are doing the same thing. So it's like, come hang out with the property brothers, whatever their names are, property brother one and two. Um, they look like uh, Mark and John. Mark and John. All right. So Mark and John, come hang out with Mark and John for four days. And so these guys are celebrities. And with every celebrity, you get the weirdos. Kind of like how you're talking about how, you know, you should go around and like pick up napkins that KD left at McDonald's oh, yeah. and then oh, yeah. stalk their ass. But these people have like real people that do that. And there's one lady who took it a bit too far. Her name is Dorothy uh -oh. Rebicki. So Dorothy is a flight attendant from Phoenix, Arizona, pride of Phoenix. A lot of great stuff happening in Phoenix these days. So they actually did this once back in 2012. She's a flight attendant. She's not a millionaire. And at the previous, at the previous cruise, there was like kind of one of those like fan paintings, like George Costanza had on uh, on uh, Seinfeld. Okay. Okay. So kind of okay. one of those things of the Property Brothers, and they did they did an auction at one point, and one of the gimmicks there was you know all the money that goes for that painting is going to be donated charity. Whoever buys it, whatever amount they buy it for. The property brothers will match that dollar for dollar and donate it to, you know, like St. Jude's or some worthy cause. So at the end of the day, it's a good okay. thing. People get money for charity. So this lady paid thirty nine hundred dollars for this painting. All right. So she's in it deep. But that's not where she goes overboard. So since 2012, old Dorothy's fallen on hard times. She is in kidney failure. Her kidneys don't work. So for those of you that are not medical professionals, I'm not a medical professional. A poker guy, he doesn't know much about medicine. But I'll tell you this. I looked it up. I Googled it. I WebMD'd this shit. And you need your kidneys. <laughs> they do stuff for you. They, like, clean out your blood <laughs> and they keep you alive. <laughs> so if you don't, if your kidneys don't work, that's bad news for you. They're one of your vital organ systems. That's not like your appendix blowing. You know, you need that fucking thing. You know, the appendix is called an appendix because... You know, it's it's vestigial. You don't need that thing. It doesn't do anything. Your kidneys, though, yeah, you need those things. You need at least one of those things working. So Dorothy, I, be I believe, is uh, on – I don't know if she's on dialysis. I don't think she's on dialysis yet because if she was, she wouldn't have been able to go on this cruise. But her kidneys are rapidly failing her, and she's been placed on a kidney transplant list. So great news for Dorothy. She oh, got the no. call. She got the call. She's up. She can get her kidney. But Dorothy's like, but I got this cruise scheduled. <laughs> All right? And she's like, I don't have the money to get my kidney because, you know, her kidneys like forced her out of work and everything. And she's like, I just spent all my money so I could go see Mark and John and buy another fucking painting from them probably. And I, I'm not, I'm going to have to skip that, that kidney transplant appointment. All right. But here's where it gets a little more twisted. So apparently you can give a kidney. So there's like, when you're an organ donor, like if you have like HIV or something, like they won't let you give your kidney to somebody. Cause it's like, um, yeah, kidney's no good. That thing's yeah, spoiled yeah. on you. And you left it out of the fridge yeah. and it's gone bad. Well, one of the things that used to be on that list is, is hepatitis C. 
All right, but apparently hepatitis C for the, I looked this up earlier. For those of you that aren't familiar, hepatitis C is a highly infectious viral disease. And what it does is it at its peak capacity, it absolutely fucking destroys your liver, which by the way is another vital organ system that you need to stay alive. So your liver does a lot of good stuff for you too, and you need that thing to live. Well, Dorothy's like, I'll tell you what, man. I'm going to go on this cruise. So she's got, she's got two options. She's got option A, don't go on the cruise, get good kidney with no hepatitis C. Or she's got option B, go hang out with Mark and John for four days and then come back and get a hepatitis C kidney put in her body. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Wait a second. Why does the kidney have to be hepatitis C? Why can't that's it? it like she passed up her chance at a good kidney. They're like, all right, well, we got this good I, like kidneys. Like they don't stay on ice for like four days. You know, it's like, hey, uh, we got a kidney right now for you because you know maybe can't, unfortunately somebody like, got in a car uh, accident, their brain dead or whatever it is. Like, Dorothy, we got a good kidney for you right now. You got two bad kidneys. How about you get in here and we put this good kidney in your body. She's like, oh, nah, bro. I have a scheduling conflict. What's your scheduling conflict? Do you, you know, you got somebody relative dying, whatever. It's like, I'm going on a cruise. <laughs> and so rightfully so, that knocks her ass back down to, I think, hopefully to the bottom of the good kidney list. It's like, all right, Dorothy, you're going to get your ass to the fucking back of the line, bitch. Like, get the fuck back Damn. there. Like, there are other people Damn. that are going to make better use of this kidney than you are. But, But they're like... Um, if you don't want the good kidney, uh, we got some hepatitis C kidneys that like really nobody wants cause they're infected with hepatitis C, but now they've got like a course of medication that apparently can, can cure that disease. So it's like, so now uh, she's going to get a kidney okay. and hepatitis C like right when she gets it. And that's a fucking terrible idea, man. Cause yeah, they put that's you, terrible cause like, she's going to lose her liver no well but here's the thing like when you get a kidney transplant they give you a bunch of these drugs that are immunosuppressant that get your fucking like immune system like they like batter it down like into the into the like the gutter so that your body doesn't reject the organ so it's like so it's not going to fight the hepatitis exactly it's like dude like oh, you're, God. you're dorothy. <laughs> dorothy come on dorothy like go next year you know what I mean? Go next year. You'll be alive next year. If you don't, you're not going to be able to go next year to the Property Brothers Cruise, which I'm sure is pretty dope. I'm sure you're going to have a great time. And you can buy another picture or whatever the fuck you do and, you know, oogle at, at Esteban and Bill, whatever. But, dude, if you don't go <laughs> the surgery, you're going to be dead. Dorothy. <laughs> Are you going to go with hepatitis? You're going to be like, hey, hey, um. Dorothy didn't did. use, Dorothy didn't use this fork, did she? <laughs> like she didn't use this fork, right? Cuz I don't fucking want to eat it. I don't right. I don't want to eat it the right. same thing. Everybody's going to know. Everybody's going to know who she is. Like, ew, that's ew, did she just breathe out of me? Ew. I don't want to be sitting next to Dorothy eating this jello. Ugh, I'm not doing and that. And she's a whole, that's no a thing. horribly infectious disease. Like you did not want to fuck with that. Like when I go out to restaurants, I'm like, god damn it, dude. I'm like on the brink of like bringing my own silverware when I go when I go to those places. <laughs> it's like, dude, how do you know that like the last guy in there wasn't just like just fucking covered in hepatitis from head to toe, eating mashed potatoes off the same spoon that you're trying to eat off of? And then you got some dude back there making like eight bucks an hour. Like that ain't that is not like an autoclave they got going on back there in the fucking dishwashing area. It's like some dude just like scrubbing it with a sponge, like maybe putting soap on it. And that shit lives for like a week outside the body. I don't I don't get it, man. You don't want to think about Dude, that you stuff. Probably too much. Come across, you've probably come across hepatitis, uh, honestly. Like that's why you need to keep your immune system in check. You know what I mean? That's why you gotta make sure your immune system is good. Yeah, and, and, and not and immunosuppressed from a recent <laughs> sure, kidney transplant, yeah. maybe. <laughs> make sure you, if you're gonna get a kidney, make sure it doesn't have hepatitis sprinkles all over it. You know what I mean? Because you know that's like one of those like, monkey. That's like bro. one of those monkey paw things where, like, you know that weird like Twilight Zone monkey paw where, like, yeah, you get a, you get wishes off of it, but they all come with with horrible catches. It's like, dear, dear Lord, okay. I, would just, I would love to get a kidney this this year. I would love to do it. It's like, 
Great news. We got one. It's like, catch number one. Oh, it's during the cruise. Fuck it. Can't make that. <laughs> catch number two. It's got hepatitis. Fuck it. Can't. All right. Wait a cool. second. I'll take that. Catch number three. You're going to be on drugs. They're going to kill your immune system. Hepatitis is going to ravage your body and kill you much quicker than your kidney disease. <laughs> Uh, R.I.P. Dorothy, we're going to sell an oil painting of you at the next cruise as a super fan, and we're going to donate that to fucking kidney awareness or diabetes or whatever made you ruin those kidneys. But it's okay. We're going to do some thoughts and prayers, and you know, next time we have an HGTV like electro dance music festival, it's going to be pretty dope. We're going to make sure to have a, a giant poster board where people can sign and take selfies on it and hashtag to it and shit, but uh, don't worry. You'll be dead, so you know. You know, you're not gonna be able to enjoy it. But. <laughs> you're very dead, Dorothy. You're fucking. You're, you're not long for this world. So definitely enjoy it's that. Like what, they, have a, they have a house hunters electro dance music festival, and they're handing out an ecstasy. I'm gonna fucking go to that. Fuck that. I don't need a kidney. I'd rather go to that fucking thing. <laughs> house hunters and fucking dance music and ecstasy. Pfft, I'll take that MDMA all day, baby. <laughs> DMA all day. Good kidneys, just stay away from those things. Yeah, I, mean, I guess the uh, the catch there too is you probably need good kidneys to like clear that MDMA out of your system too. You probably need your liver working to like get that out of your you body. Definitely need the liver, but it's it's definitely the liver. Dorothy, if you're listening, for the love of God, just go next year. Go to the Gronk. The Gronk fucking oh, she already went. Right like, it's, it's too late. It's too late for oh, Dorothy. It's, over. it's like that dude in in the first opening scene of The Rock where they fucking lock him in the uh, weapons thing. It's like, they, we've closed oh, yeah, the door on late. Dorothy and her skin is melting. We feel really bad, but hey, what can you do? Vaporized. Vaporized. You know, vaporized that can happen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> vaporized. <laughs> vaporized. Womack! You piece of shit. Fucking Womack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into these games, man. Let's get into this. Um, Chiefs are up on the Chargers right now, twenty-one fourteen, minute ten left in the third. So, what know. was the uh, what was the line of this game? Because I think it was like up in the fifties, right? You should have bet the over. The on over that. the over under on that. I don't know. I mean, I'd be sweating that right now. That's thirty-five points. You'd, yeah, it's third you'd be quarters. Needing, kind of, yeah, you'd be needing probably three touches there in the in the fourth quarter. I'd be sweating that. If you yeah. got the over in that thing. You're sweat. I mean, it's already over by the time you listen to this, but if you got the over, you're just fucking sweating right there. Um, let's go ahead. Let's start here with the Texans at the Jets. Nine and four Texans. Over under is 41 and a half. Texans are six and a half point favorites on the road. They got beat last week. Andrew, Captain Andrew Luck went in, took out the Texans. And you have you made a very short prediction that they would lose the rest of the games this year until you found out the Jets were on their schedule. So I'm gonna have to agree with Poker Guy version 2.0 and not the not the original version that the Texans are gonna win this thing. And I mean, I don't. I mean, this is gonna be a dead ass fucking stadium. So we both lived out in New Jersey for a while. We know how that bullshit goes down. So these are Saturday games as well, people. So the, the college football. Yeah. Season is over. The lords at the NFL have blessed us. Thank you for having some common sense and not making me fucking talk to my family during the weekend. I appreciate that. And that's very kind of you. And as a result, I'm going to do your favor. I'm going to bet some money on these games. I'm going to put on the Texans to cover that six and a half. Um, I didn't realize that was going to be a Saturday game. That's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, no, uh, they're faking it. Fuck Bill O'Brien. I know I said last week, PG 2.0 said, um, I'm going to take the Texans on here, but I'm going to downgrade. I didn't like the upgrade. The upgrade was laggy. It was all fucked up. It was making my PC crash. I'm going back to 1.0. Todd Bowles, like I said, he's in mega fuck it mode. He was in mega fuck it mode last week. He's taking that tank and he's driving it right onto the turnpike, right onto Route 3, right onto I-95, running over all those East Rutherford Jets fans. He's taking them out with him. And the Jets with a 6.5 underdog, I think they're going to take that. I think they're going to be able to cover. They may not be able to win, but Todd Bowles is going to try his hardest to give New Jersey one last fuck you. And I say the word New Jersey on purpose. I choose my words very carefully. Okay. So, so you, fuck you, Bill O'Brien. You got the Jets. I got the Texans. So everyone that's new to the podcast, our third guest is a coin that we flip to see if we're better than that. And the Jets, he's on the Jets, man. So the coins with coins the Jets. With me, baby. Two on one there. Not no Bitcoin certification in either direction. Last game on Saturday is a primetime game. Feels funny to say that about Browns at Broncos, but that's true. It's actually happening. 
Browns five seven and one. Broncos six and seven. Broncos are two and a half point favorites at home. Over under is forty five and a half. And fucking Case Keenum, god damn, you fucked me last week. I'm on, I'm off, and I'm very much off of the Broncos this week. Greg Williams, he can't coach. We figured that out when he gave up a point mm-hmm. to take a penalty. Only to he kick did, There's no way he did that on purpose. He must have had to take that penalty. There's no fucking way. I don't know. I I I haven't looked into that. I just gotta assume that he doesn't he doesn't know what's going on because his name's Greg Williams. But I do like Baker Mayfield. I like the steam they're gaining on offense. They've gotten rid of Hugh Jackson. They've had a few weeks to work out some of the the new plays. They're called plays that actually work. And they're going to be adding more of those every week into the offense. Browns, they're going to be coming after Keenum. I like them straight up to win this thing. And I definitely like them to cover that two and a half. I like you, man. Browns somehow, they're still in the playoff hunt. I don't believe it. Um, with the Steelers lost last week. Um, Browns are the only team in the AFC North to actually win last weekend, and the Broncos are only coming in at a two and a half point favorite. So I think this is where the season ends for them finally. You know, we gave him the shovel last week, but unfortunately, listeners, this is a Batman movie where he lives at the end and he's having dinner in Italy and shit at the very in the credits. No, no, no. Batman dies at the end of this movie, and so did Joseph. So we killed him last weekend. It's over for him. Browns with a win here. I'm feeling dangerous. I'm taking the Browns to cover. Feeling dangerous. The coin disagrees. He's on the Broncos. Next game up. This is a Sunday game. We're getting into Sunday. Scott Hansen is going to be with us for these games. We got three more weeks of red zone, everybody. Time is precious. <laughs> Get in front of your TVs. You got 21 more hours. You need to ignore your families. That's it. <laughs> Just tell them you'll be out soon, man. I'll be out soon, baby. I'll be out, I'll soon, be out soon, Grace. Soon. I'll be out soon. I'll be out soon. I'll be out when the Redskins and Jaguars are over. Seven and a half point favorites. Jags at home. Over under is 36. Holy fucking shit. That is very <laughs> low. Um, I, I like, seems strange to say it. I don't know. I think Josh Johnson is going to be quarterback in the Redskins. I don't know how much they're going to be able to score. I, th- I think we're still on. Who's that fucking loser? Cody Kessler. Cody Kessler. Yeah, we're still Jaguars. on the Jaguars. Cody- I'll tell you, yeah. we're going to pick this thing, but I am not. No, I am, I'm going to treat this like the Buffalo Bills are playing the Buffalo Bills, and I'm going to keep my fucking money out of this thing. I'll go ahead for the sake of completeness. I'll take the Jaguars to cover that seven and a half. I'll go with the Jags just because the Dan Snyder feces residue is all over the Redskins. I'm going to take the Jags to cover, and it's not a testament to the Jags being good. It's just a testament to the Redskins, or excuse me, the Washington football team being just that terrible. Go with the Jags if you're trying to make some money. We're on the Jags. Uh, we got the coin. It's very contrarian. He's fading us today. Jag is on. He's on the Redskins there, so the coin's on the he, Redskins. He's a Dan Snyder guy. He's a Snyder. That's right. He's That's a really Dan Snyder guy. We got to quit flipping it yeah. for these Redskins games. He loves Jerry. He loves yeah. Dan, and he absolutely fucking can't get enough he of Jim. Yeah, he loves man, it. those guys are thick as thieves, dude. Thick as thieves. Dolphins. We're gonna have a problem picking Cowboys Colts later. I mean, it's, it's he's yeah. he's always gonna be on Jim's team. Well, I know it's he's it's tough, gym, but it's like when your alma mater, like your undergraduate alma mater, might play your graduate school alma mater. Your loyalty is always going to be to the the undergrad. Like those those ties are exactly. deeper. Blood is thicker than water at that point, and whatever Jim's cooking up is thicker than whatever Jerry's got going on. So Dolphins. It's like The Office, man. Your favorite character is Stanley. My favorite character is Pam or or Michael Scott. His favorite character is Jim Big Tuna. No one's favorite character is Pam. She's a bitch. Uh, she's a selfish, yeah, selfish like bitch. Um, let Jim live like his Pam. dreams, woman. Like, God damn, support the man. He's done nothing but bend over backwards for you. You've done nothing but manipulate him and, you know, just tease him for years and be in a relationship you had no business being in. That's enough of the office. I liked Karen. I liked Karen or whatever. Yeah. Or chick. I was like, man, Karen, she's she's a good lady. She played Call of Duty. She played Call of Duty, Jim. You fucked up, yeah. brother. Now I got to sit at home and watch fucking... 
you know. Now you're watching The Handmaid's Tale. On Netflix. You're watching The Handmaid's, Handmaid's Tale. Oh, <laughs> my God. I have Handmaid's not seen Tale. that. Thank God. Oh, oh my, my God. Or Downtown Thank Abbey. God. You know he's I've, watching Downtown I've Abbey. A, I've, oh, I've seen a lot God. of Downtown Abbey. That's for sure. Oh, no, God. No, no man Abbey. is immune oh, to it all. You know, we've all catch different bullets in different parts of the body, and I've caught many a Downtown Abbey bullet. <laughs> Dolphins at the Vikings. Speaking of catching bullets, Joe DeFilippo, he caught one right between the eyes oh, from Mike yeah. Zimmer. Fired, done, gone. Vikings are seven and a half point favorites at home. Over under is 44 and a half. I don't know what there is to like about the Vikings. I don't know how they're seven and a half point favorites here. I, agree. I get it. The villain from Ghost and Ryan Tannehill are coming to town, but they still got Frank Gore in the backfield. I think they can control the ball against the very average Vikings defense. If you want to look in the mirror, you got to look in the mirror here, Mike. Because your defense has not been what it was in the past. Seven and a half points is too much. I'm going to take the Dolphins here to cover that. The Dolphins are hot garbage. They say they're seven and a half point underdog hot garbage, though. And I think that's a little extreme. Um, With that being said, the Vikings did fire their OC. And I'm going to take some Bobby Fever Sage advice here, people, if you're listening, all right? Personnel changes, that's a big one, right? You got some new gadget plays, some new O-line shit. They're going to do the Philly special Viking edition. Everyone's playing for the playoffs. Um, Mike Zimmer is probably pointing his gun at people. People are motivated. They don't want to die. Uh, I just got to have a feeling that the Vikings are going to win this turd fest. But with that being said, Viking fans, get a pen, get a paper, write this number down. 1-800-273-8255. 1-800-273-8255. This, of course, is the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. So if they do end up losing this game to the Dolphins, that's it for the Vikings. You guys are getting a shovel. Uh, just a heads up, I'm taking the Vikings to cover. So you think the Vikings are going to cover? I'm on the Dolphins. The coin's with me. He's on the Dolphins. Steven Ross, another notoriously shitty owner. No, no. He's in collusion. He works for the ST. The coin is actually Roger Goodell. We actually got Goodell picks here. Um, Titans at the Giants. Titans 7-6. and six. They're in a free fall. Giants 5-8. and eight. They are rallying. Over-under is 43.5. Giants are 1.5 point favorites at home. Eli Manning signs a life. Marcus he, Eli Manning has a better stat line than Marcus Mariota. I know Marcus Mariota has missed a few games. I don't believe in him. Derrick Henry, of course, he had that monster game, either rewarding. He, I think he was only playing in 14% of fantasy leagues last week. But if you were on one of the unfortunate few to play against him, well, you don't have to worry about that yeah. anymore because you're probably out of your fantasy football playoffs. So you, you can just go ahead and get on DraftKings, <laughs> who unfortunately is not a sponsor of the podcast yet. But, hey, we can keep rocking and rolling there. Um, DraftKings promo code Bobby um, for, you know, I don't know, five bucks. Off. I don't even know how DraftKings work. I've never fucking played that. But anyhow, Giants – for whatever reason, I, I just, man, it always feels strange, but I was on the Giants last week. It felt good. It felt right. Something going on there. There is a crazy world, and I don't think that world exists anymore because we got big Dick Nick back in the uh, driver's seat of the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFC East, so there's no way they're losing another fucking game. But Giants, there's a world where they conceivably make the playoffs, at least before Nick got back in the fold. I think they keep it rolling. I'm going to take the Giants on this one to cover that one and a half. I hate this fucking line. Um, with that being said, this is a must win for Tennessee. If I had to take someone, I'll take Tennessee to cover. But gosh damn it, the Giants are fucking stupid. They are stupid. I think they're going to try and win out. I don't think they're going to make a playoff. Um, can you guys just hurry up and go to the woods and just die already? Please, God, just end your season. I think the Titans will win and they will cover. So, we're, hey, we are diametrically opposed on almost every one of these things. So the coin's with you. Coin's the Titans, man. All right, fuckers. Fuck you guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know the rule, man. Just do the opposite of you. Dude, just fade Bobby, man. Money. You got a lot of money to be <laughs> made. I'm just trying to win money, man, and that's all I'm trying to do. So Cardinals, 3-10. and 3-10 and 10 after beating the Green Bay Packers. Over-under is 44. That was two weeks ago, but still. Over under is 44. Falcons are 4 and 9. Best 4 and 9 team in the history of the NFL, perhaps? I don't know. <laughs> Debatable. They're <laughs> nine and a half point favorites. As we know, Falcons are officially, double official, secret probation on my Buffalo Bills blacklist. I'm not putting any money on this game, but if I were, 
I would, I definitely would put it on the Falcons because I think that's a disease <laughs> and I can't stop doing that. I might wake up Sunday morning and do something stupid and look at that and be like, oh, nine and a half. That's like oh, 10. No. Mm, uh, what have been using Bovada? I've been using like Bet Online. What have you been using? Um, I, I, I've been using a combination. I'm like one of those guys who's at the, at this point in the gambling season. I'm like one of those guys who like shows up to a restaurant or whatever and is like, here, put like 30 bucks on this card. And then put, you know, like 40 bucks on this card. And I think I've got like like 20 or 25 left on this one. You know, like spread, spread, you know who you are, dude? You know, spread it out. Spread it out there. You're the guy at the roulette tables on like Saturday night at like 3 in the morning. Everybody's coming out of the clubs. And you see this guy. He's on a roulette table. And he just, you know, bombs 600 bucks. And then he just goes to the next roulette, to, uh, next roulette table like 30 paces that way. You just bomb another 300 and you're like, fuck this, I'm going to win it. And then you go to the craps table and lose it with another quick 200. And then you go to the ATM and that's where I lose track of you because I'm like, <laughs> I can't watch this. This is too devastating. Bobby, um, Bobby, do you have any idea what the interest rates are on cash advances for your credit card? <laughs> like, don't do that, man. Like, you can't be fucking <laughs> doing that. Can't do that, brother. Uh, going back to cards, Falcons, um, you got two bird teams, so that's probably the highlight of this game. The cards have legit one less win than Atlanta, which is unbelievable. If you're looking for a similar experience, just go watch the Kill Bill scene where she fights all the Japanese people with swords. Lots of red and lots of meaningless talking. Meaningless game, meaningless game. Cards should take the cover, though. Diametric opposition continues. You're just, you're just I'm going, take yeah, the cards right. you make here. me pick I'm all these things, the and you're just going to go opposite. All right, that's what it's going to fucking be. Fuck you. Going back to <laughs> Vegas real quick. We'll flip the coin here. The coins with me. Ha ha. <laughs> I think that means anything. Uh, back to Vegas. I was in Vegas one year. Uh, I used to live out in California, so I'd spent a number. I've lost a good amount of money in Las Vegas. I, I, I've been there Hell probably yeah. five times. And I think I've come out of there. I think I'm like two for five. So two times I came out of there with more money. And then three times I've, I've come out of there with, with less, like very, very much nice. less. And nice. that's, I mean, that's how it works. It's why there are fucking hotels there. Right. But one night my buddy and I were there and we had a big fucking night at, of all places, a roulette table. I mean, that's a bad Ooh. game to be playing. The only reason I like roulette, like roulette is like a great, like heavy drinking game. If you're just like really drinking, it's a great game because a drunk monkey can play roulette as well as the most like skilled uh, roulette player can. So we went out yeah. and we had a very Both lucky night. I mean, you're, terrible. you're depending solely on luck that is almost universally going to be not in your favor, but we, we were up like, I don't know. It was like 1200 bucks, which for us at the time was like a lot of money. So we're up 1200 bucks and we were fucking wasted off of vodka and Red Bull. And we went back, <laughs> we went back up to the room and we were out till like, you know, five or six in the morning. We go back up to the room and we're, you know, we're sleeping in the same room, like two, you know, two queen beds. Um, and like, I'm like tossing, I like lay down, like, all right, we're going to go to sleep. You know, we'll get back up. We'll hit it tomorrow. And I'm trying to sleep. And I'm like, bro, I can't sleep. I was like, you want to fucking go make some more money? <laughs> He's like, yeah, oh, let's go make no. some more money, man. And we went down to, we're like, let's go fucking play some blackjack, man. And this experience is, spoiler alert, this experience has soured me on blackjack <laughs> for the rest of my life. We ran into this dude named Mark at the fucking this blackjack table and we went up we went fucking full on tilt he lost like 500 bucks i lost like 400 bucks and we're playing like i don't know we're playing like 10 15 20 bucks in hand like not big limit I mean, we're not playing like hundred dollar games and we went on fucking tilt and this dude just hammered us man like he fucked us up and it was like 35 minutes in like 35 minutes. We were down like 900 to the 1200 bucks that we won. And finally we got enough of a beating. We just drug our ass back upstairs and finally went to sleep, got a little sleep, went to the Rio buffet um, and, had, and had delicious. That's my favorite buffet out of Vegas, <laughs> by the way, for those of you heading out to Vegas. So let's move on here. Cowboys, the Colts over under 47. Colts are three point favorites at home. Cowboys eight and five. Colts seven and six. The Cowboys are hot. Won five in a row. 
Like you said, man, we got battle of Jerry Jones' squad versus Jim Ursay's squad. Cowboys are looking good as far as their playoff situation. It's a desperate, desperate position for the Colts to be in. They know they need this game. They can't afford. Maybe they lose one more. They can squeak in. They cannot afford to lose two more. And, I mean, how much are the Cowboys for real? How much are they pretenders? You know, we'll continue to find that out. Their defense is legit. Like, they got dudes. Mm -hmm. Like, they got dudes on their Mm -hmm. defensive squad. I'm never going to believe in Dak Prescott. I don't know what it would take for me to believe in him. But Andrew Luck's known to give the ball up. And I think he's going to do that thing where he just gives it up at the wrong time. And the Cowboys are going to end up winning this. I like the Cowboys on the road to cover those three points. I didn't pick this game. I was just going to pick the opposite of what you were going to pick. But I'm going to agree with you there. That Cowboys defense is real. And I think that's the recipe for their for their playoff push is let the defense do most of the work and then just don't fuck up. Don't make a lot of mistakes. Give it to Zeke. You know, let him rock that crop top he's been crop top that he's crop been top's rocking back, for so man. long. It's officially back. Crop top's back and I love it. Keep it coming, boys medium. Keep it rocking, keep it rolling. But the crazy thing is most of these teams, they're on the up and up, but this is a must win for both teams. You're talking about maybe the Colts or the Cowboys being able to lose one and then win a couple more. This is a must win for both teams. I don't like the over under. I don't like the spread. This is going to be probably one of the best games of the week. I do not want to put any money on it, but really the question we got to, you know, if I'm going to choose, I'll choose the Colts because you chose the Cowboys. But what are the chances that Jerry Jones is hitting up Jim for some sage advice and where to pick up some ladies, if you know what I mean? And <laughs> more important, where to drop them off afterwards. Yeah. If you know hey, I mean. Jim, where do I get rid of this broad? What do you mean get rid of it? You know what I mean, get rid of Jim. So we don't need to flip Jim, the coin. We know what the coin's going to do. He's going to stay. With, stick with number one. He's with Jim. So you you and uh, you and he are both in the Colts. Did you say you're the Colts or you're on the Cowboys? Well, let us let me rewind. You picked the Cowboys, right? Yeah, I picked the Cowboys. So you're on the Colts. Side. I'm going Colts. Diehard Colts fan right here. Let's go, baby. Colts up or whatever the fuck they say. Buckle up. Whatever. I don't know Hashtag. what their little bullshit thing is. I don't want to learn either. I'm not from Indian Indiana. Are they from Indianapolis, Indiana? Yeah, I'm not from Indiana. Horns, horns, maybe go horns. Toss the toss yeah. the shoe. Cool, toss cool. Hook them. All right, Raiders. Hook em. Three and ten <laughs> at the Bengals. Five and eight. There was some Zach Smith shit on Twitter too today. <laughs> Uh, I was waiting for the update. I was waiting <laughs> for the update. Says, let me, I'm going to go ahead. Let me fucking pull Zach Smith's Twitter up. What's the guy's name? Todd Herman? Tom Todd Herman. Herman. We, 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 I, I love that. We call him, cool. Yeah, we call him. Welcome. We definitely call him Todd. <laughs> so I'm going to continue to call him Todd Herman. Uh, let me go ahead cool. Let me go ahead and find Zach Cool. Here. Hook him. So, hey, Zach. So, awesome. yeah, I think we forgot about you, brother. <laughs> I think we forgot about you. This came up in my timeline earlier. Where was he at? Oh, damn. Oh, apparently, so he his wife went – oh, man, there's too much going on here. <laughs> We're going to have to update this on Sunday. But holy shit. There's some Zach Smith fire going on. If you're not if you're not a uh, follower of Zach Smith on Twitter, apparently his uh, ex-wife came out and said some crazy stuff. Um, about who? About, about Zach. Zach. Um, I, well, let's save it for Sunday, dude. Let's save it for yeah, Sunday. Yeah, so I'll get, I'll get on top of that, yeah. everybody. We'll get you updated on there. It's a little greeny tease for you. You won't believe what Zach Smith's wife said about him on social media. Find out. Find out next week for the Spanish listeners. La próxima semana. <laughs> All right, multicultural. All right, so let's go. I don't want to talk about this game. Bengals Raiders, fuck it. I'll roll with Mark. I'll sit in the barber chair next to him. I got the Raiders. Um, I'll just choose the Bengals because you went full Raiders. Uh, but the real chatter here, just real quick, Hugh Jackson may take over. I don't know if you saw that. I know you were saying that's just kind of like blah, blah. But they're saying really that Hugh Jackson may take over once they let go of Marvin Lewis. And the real question is, have we really reached that cheap, shameless head coach option that can tank for picks. Is that really what's going on here? I kind of wanted your opinion on that. I just, Is that we're really what the Bengals are Why doing? do that when there are qualified candidates out there like Mrs. Keenum on the board? Like, don't do that. Don't reach for Hugh. I mean, he's, he's got a proven track record. The funny thing is, though, he's fucking – he's, like, making the rounds, man. He was a failure in Oakland before he was a failure in Cleveland, and now he's back to being a failure in Cincinnati. I don't know how that he, – He's cheap, man. I'm telling you. He's cheap. He's somebody that can run – 
your organization into the ground, guarantee some picks, and then swim in whatever stupid river or sewer that you have in your city. I think Cincinnati's got a, some sewer system, so he could probably swim in there and cleanse his body there. Hugh Jackson I think is like that guy whose uncle owns a construction company, and no matter how many people he fucking puts – you know, puts nails into their feet with the fucking nail gun. Like he's still, or how many times he shows up late and drunk to work for whatever reason, he's still going to be able to draw a paycheck in the NFL. Yeah. It, yeah. it doesn't matter how many OSHA laws he breaks. It doesn't matter that he used like eight ladders to climb to the top of that house, like duct tape <laughs> yeah. together. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You put Mexican dude's life at risk. It doesn't really matter because you are blood and that's important. Well, let's move on. Let's get out of here. You pick the Raiders. I pick the Bengals. Let's talk the Lions. All right, Bills. Coins Another on the Bengals. Lions at the Bills. You know we're not putting money on this thing. Let's cruise right through it. We got a couple of fucking turds here. Lions 5-8 and eight at the Bills 4-9. Over-under is 39.5. Two-point favorites are the Bills at home. That's crazy to say. Stupid. Lions are imploding. Buffalo's got a defense. I'm Jaheem Allen. I want him to go full Jaheem. Let's go. Harness your Jaheem. Let's get it done. I'll I'll put my money on the Bills. I'll actually, I, when I say that, I will pick the Bills. I will absolutely not put any money on this game. I will choose the opposite. I'm going Lions here. Thank God it's a 1 o'clock game because if it was in the afternoon slate, I wouldn't be fucking watching it. So you're going Bills. I'm going Lions. Coins with me. He's here. on the Bills. Bucks at the Ravens. Bucks 5-8 and eight at the Ravens 7-6. and six. Over-unders 46.5. Ravens are 7.5-point favorites at home. Joe Flacco, he's officially healthy, and he's officially not the starter. They're going to go with Lamar Jackson. Um, I mean, we'll see how that They were always going to, though. That was never, like, a thing. Like, yeah, Joe I mean, Flacco they're going to stick done. with the hot hand. I mean, I, if the thing is, it will be interesting if the Bucks end up winning this thing, which would be in, which would be – I don't know, a surprise, you know, to everybody, including Vegas bookmakers, but not the most Why? unforeseen thing. If they win this thing, you got to wonder what's the debate in the in the room at that point. Do you go back to Joe or do you stick with Lamar? He's three and one as a starter. I don't really care. The Ravens are, they're boring. I get it. They're running the wing T now. That's great. They're rushing 70% of the time. I like watching Pat Mahomes throw 70-yard bombs. I don't like watching Lamar Jackson run the read option. So regardless of what happens in this game, Scott Hansen, do me a favor. Put this thing in the rotation with the Raiders and the Bengals, the Lions and the Bills, and keep it off a TV screen. But if I'm picking it, I'll take the Ravens to cover that 7.5. Well, I want the RG3 saga to continue, so I'm hoping the Ravens are going to win. I would like the Bucks to win, though, but – uh, I would take the Bucks though. They're not going to lose by a lot. They'll keep it within a touchdown or at least win. But again, this is a must win for the Ravens, and um, yeah, a must win for the cut, uh, the Dirk Cutter family because the cut, you know, the Cutters, you know, they need those PS4s, you know. So Cutter children, if you're listening, leave your fucking dad alone. Let him study because if he loses that game, Christmas is canceled, you know. So good luck and Merry Christmas. And uh, let's, let's. I think stop, it's going to be an extra long this. Christmas celebration at the Cutters household because I think this could be the end of it for Dirk if they lose this thing. I mean, yeah. they're at five and nine. Might as well just cut them loose, get a head start on a coaching search. Coaching search going sure. on. Let's see what is a coin at there. Coins in the home teams, the coins in the Ravens as well. Coaching search going on in Green Bay already. One thing we didn't touch on. Apparently, Brett Favre has kind of informally thrown his hat into the ring as being the future head coach of the green bay packers that's a terrible that's a terrible yeah, idea i don't like that on so yeah. many levels i mean if nothing else yes great nfl football player fantastic spokesman for beard trimmers and like jeans jean wearers yeah sure, sure. and i was into that like uh where you wear like weird magnet shit on your bodies uh, whatever that thing was, you, you wear you, 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 like, you, oh, yeah. how do magnets work? Well, Brett Favre is here to tell you how. Uh, he was into that for a while, but he's also the dude who I'm not hating on him. I mean, but he's got a little bit of inner Jim Ursay when it comes to you know having some demons on that front, having a bit of a drug addiction problem, which I mean probably stemmed from team doctors just shoving Vicodins down his throat to keep him on the field for 200, 300 games, however many played in a row. But he's also the dude that sent a bunch of pictures of his very modest penis to that fucking Jets reporter. So, like, <laughs> lest we forget that, 
Um, that's not the dude. That's allegedly, dude. That's allegedly. <laughs> There's nothing alleged about on, that, dude. man. There's definitely his very modest cock uh, that he, <laughs> yeah, modest is a generous term as well. Um, there's definitely his dick pic that he sent to, I think her name was Jen Sturger. That's, that's gotta be horrible. You spend your entire life as a reporter. The only thing anybody remembers of you is that you got Brett Favre's dick pics, but I don't think Mitch Trubisky sent any dick pics to anybody and the bears. They beat the, uh, Rams last week. Defense was ferocious. Trubisky was fucking terrible. Packers have a yeah. terrible defense. I think the the uh, Bears offense gets back on track. They're six point favorites at home, and I like them to to cover that. All right, here it is. So, despite Trubisky shitting his pants last week, that defense held that offense to six points. You know, so that defense is looking as they say in Cleveland, dangerous. Rodgers needs to put that ACL brace on extra tight because I think they're going to be after his ass. Bears win. Packers lose. Bears with the six points. All right. We're and also, by the way, Brett Favre, no. <laughs> yeah, no. It's, it's, it's a, Don't hire it's a hard Favre. pass on that. No. No, Brett. No. no. All right. Coins, no. coins with us. That's our first Bitcoin certified bet of the week right there. We are tripled up on the Bears. Seahawks at the – We've been liking the Bears, though. We've been liking the yeah. Bears towards the end of the season. I come around the on season, them, we man. On them. I have come yeah. around yeah. on them. I'm, ba- I'm finally in 2018, and – for the first nine weeks of next, you know, next season, I'm going to be loving the Bears as well, no matter what. Uh, Seahawks eight and five at the 49ers three and ten. Over under is 44. Seahawks are only given three and a half points. Eight and That's f- crazy. Isn't that fucking right, man. That's crazy. Like, oh my god, That's that crazy. is big. Co- that is my. That is a fucking bet of the week right there. Seahawks only given that makes three and a no half. No sense. That's ridiculous. Get. I'm getting on Bovada as soon as I'm this fucking podcast I'm fucking ends. <laughs> I'm emptying that shit out, and I'm putting. Somebody's it all getting the fired, dude. Somebody's getting fucking fired. That is a mistake. That's supposed to be a 13.5 underdog. You know what yeah, I mean? That's, are we missing a digit here? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, so I'm all over the Seahawks. I'm all over that. Totally. Seahawks must win. Niners must lose. This isn't fucking multiverse thing with Ashton Cooker, but cut your butterfly effect. No, it's, this is this is a 3.5 underdog. Are you fucking kidding me? Bet on the Seahawks and make some easy money. Oh, Moving man. right along. That's easy money. Right Pats along. at the Steelers. This is a premium matchup of Sunday afternoon. Tommy heading into Heinz Field. They are, they're going to change the name of that to, from Heinz Field to either Belichick Field or Brady Field at a certain <laughs> point because they have fucking owned the Steelers. Giselle Field. For the they last... call it Giselle Field. Yeah, there you go. Giselle Bunchen. She's actually the number five. I saw something on Twitter. She's the number five grossing uh, supermodel uh, this year. Uh, Kendall Jenner is number one for anyone who's interested i'm sure i'm sure our podcast is just well we just took that to the next level right there steelers <laughs> mike tomlin he's come under fire rocky was it franco harris rocky blyer one of these old steeler running backs came out and shadow over him same way terry bradshaw does since you're about terry bradshaw but google terry bradshaw's wife and you won't have much shit to talk about terry bradshaw anymore because this goofy ass is a fucking smoking hot wife um, and he's got four <laughs> Super Bowl rings, so he isn't. No wonder he just does not. He just like gets wasted and just fucking says whatever he wants to. Not <laughs> Joe Namath wasted. Night football. <laughs> like, not Joe Namath wasted. He just gets fucked up and talks shit about football players. I don't know. I think things get a little bit darker in Pittsburgh, and the Pats over under fifty two, two and a half point favorites on the road. I like Bill. They're pissed, man. That Miami shit. Oh, that is under their skin all week. And if you think Belichick hasn't been pulling it, picking it that like a splinter, oh, man, you are wrong. I like the Pats coming out fucking hot. And I love the Pats on the road here. They own Pittsburgh. That's their town. Change the name of the stadium. A December game, too. Like a lot of people saw that Tom and Josh, you know, they were holding those Microsoft Surface. Surface pros last week in Miami, but they weren't watching the Miami game film. They were preparing for this game. This is an important game for Bill. For Bill, this is a must win. He destroys his enemies in the regular season, okay? This is a regular season win, a postseason dick punch. You know, a win here is essentially a nail in the coffin for the Steelers. It's just, that's just what it is, you know? So it's an easy win for the Pats. That's what they were preparing for last week when Drake, you know, 
did a Fortnite dance in the touchdown, whatever. And he did a nice little touchdown dance. But I love the over here. This is going to be a 30-27 Pats win. Go Pats. Go Pats. Right, and the next game we're going to talk about. We got to sk- we got to skip the Sunday Eagles night game, man. We're going to come back to that. It's going to be a grand finale. That's like setting off all the fireworks at the end. What? Why? Go Saints. Why? Talking about it now. Right, we're coming back. Go Saints. They're taking on these sliding Panthers. That's Monday night. Booger, Jason Witten. I heard a rumor, too, that uh, Jason Garrett was trying to get Witten out of the booth and come back and help the Cowboys yeah, out. Yeah. Everybody universally in the comment section on that just shitting all over it. They're like, whatever gets Witten out of the booth, we're in favor of. <laughs> you know, like, whatever gets him out of the booth, like we are happy for it. Whether it's back on the field. Just take Booger with you. You can have Witten, but take Booger with you and take his fucking Booger scooter with you. Just get them both. Take I'll tell you what, I have done a complete him. 180 on Booger after he shit on Calvin Benjamin. That Popeye's biscuit thing. I was like, oh, maybe yeah. Booger's got something <laughs> cooking here, man. I'm going to look at this with fresh eyes. And he, Yeah, but he's still in like a fucking like Razor scooter buzzing around and getting in the way and shit. Like, get him off the field. Yeah, I don't know. Get him off I mean, the I'm gonna, field. I'm going to be selfish about that. I'm not in those seats. Like, I'm not in those seats. What I would say is I would figure out, like, he's got to be limited to, like, one sideline. I wonder if you could figure out which sideline the Booger Mobile is going to be on before you purchase your tickets. Oh, it's just like... He's got to be on like the away team sideline, right? Wouldn't you think? Um, which, by, by the way, uh, I don't know. If, speaking man. of sidelines, did you see uh, Leonard Fournette threatening to kick that one guy's ass uh, in the stands? No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, so somebody was heckling Leonard Fournette right in the game right after he'd come out of suspension for fighting, uh, I think it was Shaq Lawson, after he was punching his helmet like a moron. But he got out of that, and then, then at the next game, there was some fan heckling him, and Leonard Fournette was threatening to, to crawl in the stands, Malice of the Palace style, and beat the shit out of some fucking fan. <laughs> so that's just classic Leonard Fournette. But let's get back, awesome. let's get back on the Saints-Panthers. Panthers are reeling. This is being played in Carolina. I mean, I don't know. The, the only thing I can think of is the only thing that can slow the Saints down at this point is weather. I feel like they got their groove back after Taysom Hill blocked that punt. They scored, what, 22 or 29 points unanswered against the uh, lowly Buccaneers, sent Jameis into a tailspin. Over unders, 51 and a half, <laughs> six and a half point favorites on the road. I, I can't bet on the Panthers, man. I don't know what to expect from them. I don't know what Cam's, yeah. how what his shoulder's like. I got to go with the Saints here. I think you know their season's over. I think there's a fact remains the season for the Saint, uh, for the Panthers is over. So this is going to be Ron Rivera's swan song. They're feeling dangerous, looking dangerous after their like twelve straight losses. But the reality is, is they can't start Cam. He wasn't good two weeks ago. He wasn't good last week. Like you know, at the end of the day, a Saints loss isn't going to do anything in playoff seating. So it's like if anyone in the Panthers GM is you know office is listening to our fucking pod. Bench fucking everybody. Don't get anybody hurt. Start preparing for next season and start the dude with the Heineken last name. Get that fucking guy on the Yeah, you do know, one of those things that that new field, Bulls dude. coaches do and where he like benched everybody and they almost had a mutiny and they staged like yeah, a players only meeting. Bench meeting. everybody. Bench them all, man. So we're both on the Saints. Coin. Coin is with us. That's Bitcoin certified. Put your money on that. Saints are going to cover that six and a half. And here we are. It's all been a mooge boost up to this point. Oh, yeah. Say it with me, people. MVP. MVP. I'm not talking about Todd Gurley. I'm not talking about Jared Goff. I'm talking about Super Bowl MVP. Reigning Super Bowl MVP. Big dick Nick Foles. Eagles six and seven. Heading into the Rams 11 and two. Over under 52 and a half. Rams are 11 point favorites at home. Fuck that no way i'm with nick i'm rolling nick <laughs> this is this is shot me on the eagles needed they're gonna get on track here <laughs> i'm betting the money line on the eagles this here is- we go baby <laughs> i'm calling it i called that shit last year i got the fucking text messages to prove it i'll put out screenshots as soon as nick full signed the eagles i sent you a text message that said Guarantee, I like, can't wait for fucking Carson Wentz ACL tear. Boom. Predicted the specific <laughs> injury. Also predicted that Nick Foles is going to win a fucking Super Bowl with the Eagles. Well, guess what, baby? I'm predicting three straight wins for the Eagles. Eagles sneak into the playoffs. And then all bets are fucking off. Let's go, Philly. They needed this. 
us against the world vibe to return. They've been getting, hitting them out all year. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go. Fly Eagles fly, baby. I'm going to just gonna ignore the fact that all their defensive secondary is in tatters. Their defense is <laughs> bullshit. I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to block that out of my mind. I'm going to pretend like I'm going to forget that they can't get a pass rush. I'm going to forget all of that. I'm going to say, this is the time, baby. Let's rally around Nick. Let's do it again. He did it before. Let's go, Eagles fly. Eagles fly. Definitely love them to cover that 11 points. And don't sleep on the Eagles winning this thing outright. Uh, you know, Nick Foles' first game this season against the Atlanta Falcons, I think his total QBR rating might have been 11. That's a Super Bowl okay. hangover. Right? <laughs> that was four nine team in the history of the NFL, man. <laughs> fucking, I mean, let's go. I mean, it's a Super Bowl hangover. All right. They've had 13 right. games of it. Well, guess what? They finally got their Papa John's cheesy bread in them. They smoked a joint. Everything's back right in their world. They're ready to get back in the flow of things. Come on, come on man. Come on. Let's go. They're ready, they're ready to watch some some South Park episodes. That's what they're ready to do. They're ready to watch some It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. They're ready to sit down, smoke a little Duberoni, and get things back to where they need to be. But uh, I don't think the Rams, believe it or not, I think they might lose this game. I really do, because when you get a new quarterback in there like that, it just switches up that offense like that, just does a big 180. The film isn't out there. All right. They might have a couple Super Bowl, Super Bowl, <laughs> Super Bowl wins they might you know watch, but um the film isn't out there. I think Nick Foles is he's fresh, he's rocking, ready to go. He did the same thing last year. He sat on a bench, sat on his fucking ass all year long. He came into the playoffs fresh and clean, virgin blood. Okay. He's same thing, virgin blood. He's coming in fresh. He's coming in hot. I think he can pull some wins out of his ass. But again, the question remains: that secondary is porous, like Swiss fucking cheese. I think the Eagles will cover. This might turn out to be a really good game. I don't know if they're going to win, but the Eagles will be able to cover. I'm going to take the Rams here. Sorry, bud. All right. So you are you taking the Eagles to cover the spread? I think the Eagles will cover the spread. Right. The Rams are still going to win the game. No, we'll and then see about Nick that. Foles, we'll fucking see about that. And then Nick Foles, he's going to still be, you know, he's going to be throwing footballs in Miami next year. <laughs> he's going to be throwing footballs as a backup in fucking Texas. Who fucking knows? But this, he's, he's done. Right. This, this blasphemy. Uh, I, I can't stand this. I will not take it. I'm done with this. I'm done with this podcast. I'm done with you, sir. I'm done with you for the night. So let's get out of here. We'll see you back here on Sunday night. We'll recap all these games and we'll revel. Uh, we're going to be doing that while the Eagles are playing. So we're going to have a, probably some live time updates. On <laughs> You're going to have a very Ooh, happy Bobby or a I very sad wait. Bobby. It's going to be a good one, everybody. Come back. We'll see you on Sunday. Have a great rest of the week. Enjoy these games. There's very few left. 